I mean, the stigma around depression in men, you're not supposed to talk about it. Keep on going and fight through it without talking about it, which is stupid. I just want to reduce the stigma even by a little bit as much as I can. Hey there, my name is Sean and this is Suicide Noted. On this podcast, I talk with suicide attempt survivors so that we can hear their stories. Every year around the world, millions of people try to take their own lives and we almost never talk about it. And when we do talk about it, many of us, including me, aren't very good at it. So one of my goals with this podcast is to have more conversations and hopefully better conversations with attempt survivors. I want to thank all of my guests, all of the attempt survivors who have joined me since July of 2020. We are now on episode number 89. I am so very grateful that you found the podcast, that you trusted me, and you joined me to share so openly and so courageously. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, a huge thanks. If you are a suicide attempt survivor and you'd like to talk, please reach out. Hello at suicidenoted.com or on Facebook or Twitter at Suicide Noted. And look, we are talking about suicide, so this may not be a good fit for everybody. Please take that into account before you listen. But I do hope you listen because there is so much to learn. If you'd like to help us out, well, keep doing what you're doing. Listen to the podcast. Share it with people who may need to hear it on social media or elsewhere. And if you listen on Apple, rating and reviewing also helps a lot. It helps people find it. Thanks for that. Thanks very much. Today, I am talking with Wilson. Wilson lives in Michigan, and he is a suicide attempt survivor. Hi, Wilson. How you doing? Good right now. Yeah. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. Wilson, where are you? I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. How did you first find it? I'm wondering, did you put suicide into the search of of Apple or Spotify? I can't remember what day I emailed you, but that night I was in a dark place. And I I don't know, for some reason, I just look at videos that, that try to talk about suicide and stuff like that. And like, I'm not alone and stuff like that. And I just search suicide in in Spotify and I saw your podcast and I just, the way you just are just silent and you just listen, is just really intriguing and just something that I would like to do. I mean, I don't know if I want to make a podcast, but I just want to talk to people and and just listen and hear their story and hear what they have to say. Do you find that people in your life now that could be family, friends, or even like teacher or whoever suck at listening? It's a little bit of a loaded question. Oh yeah. I mean, People will ask, like, how are you doing? But they only want you're doing good or they don't want the real answer. Do you have any idea why people seem, most of them, most of the time, aren't so good at that? Like you said, how are you? And they kind of only want to hear, yeah, I'm fine. Like, why? I think it has to do is they sometimes some of them just never had to deal with mental illness and like uh, they haven't felt the lows of people that have depression and bipolar or whatever, they haven't felt the lows of where you go. Yeah. And they, they don't know. I mean, they, they, I mean, everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to feel happy and you don't want, Oh, I talked to this guy and I said, how are you? And he said, Oh, I'm doing horrible. I wanted to, yeah. They, you don't, you don't want to hear that. I mean, you want to say, Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing this and that. Don't disagree with you, but let me ask you this though. You said that sometimes you watch videos or a podcast to, to feel, I think you use the word less alone. Yeah. So it sounds like you're not one of those people, not to suggest that all day, every day, you want to hear everybody's problems. Yeah. But it does sound like you, and I can speak for me, sometimes I actually do want to hear, oh, no, I'm not doing doing so well. So I do want to hear people's pro- Like I want to talk with people and hear their story. It's very interesting and get another perspective on life. I've done this more in the last maybe few months. I'm more and more curious. You know, I'm sure there are people that hear it and don't reach out. That's just completely fine, but you did. And uh, what compelled you to actually uh, to email? I just wanted to, I guess, tell my story and and then people who are listening or never dealt with it or have dealt with it. Just depression is real. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay. It's going to be okay. You need to get help. It's okay. It's okay to feel these feelings, but Mm. we all need help. I 
been my whole life taking different kinds of meds, finding the right cocktail of meds, Mm -hmm, doing mm -hmm. ECT. I had to do ECT my junior year Mm -hmm. when I was, the second time I was hospitalized. I mean, it was a struggle. I mean, doing ECT, I think the first month was like three times a week, having to switch arms for IVs every time I go in. I think the worst part of it was, it wasn't even me getting ECT, it was seeing my uh, my mom take me almost every day and just see her son get getting her brain, getting her son's brain shot. Mm. I don't know. It just hurts me having to see her son in so much agony every day, trying to lift him up, even though he's in a deep depression. And yeah, I mean, ECT, honestly, if I, if I didn't have it or any of the quote unquote, hardcore treatments, I know for a fact I would have been, would have been dead. Mm. Let's go back. You had said, yeah, I want to share my story. And so I always say to the guests, Hey, what's the story and where does it start? So I'll let you decide. Um, well, I guess when I started first started feeling not good was I guess third grade. I remember I I have a dyslexia and some learning disabilities too that adds on with the depression. As I uh was in school in third grade, I just remember I being pulled out of class because the kids that have learning disabilities have to go to another room sometimes to like get one on one. Um, help which is good but like it makes some kids some kids just feel horrible like why am I getting pulled out of class like why can't I be with my friends Mm -hmm. I remember reading some of my papers saying when I was uh, little like I was a slow talker like and not slow talker like uh, I didn't talk much I wasn't really talking for how the age I was I was Mm -hmm. keeping quiet I remember getting a therapist I think it was fifth grade I just remember uh going to his office and just not saying anything the whole hour and just saying, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Or just when he asked me a question, trying to engage with me, I just shut it down. And I honestly, I feel bad now, but that's where I was at that time. Yeah. And then middle school was just middle school and high school were just atrocious. Middle school was a little bit better than high school, but I just remember just feeling sad, like coming home, going right to bed on social media or listening to music and just being sad and being my own thoughts sometimes some nights just crying nonstop Mm. just wanting the pain to go away and just not wanting to feel like like this anymore what did it feel like I just have these self-deprecating thoughts like oh I'm not good enough I'm never going to be good I'm never going to be able to get a job I'm never going to be able to go to college I'm never going to be able to do this or that I usually when people like compliment me it's an instinct for me to uh just deflect it or I can't take compliments. It's really hard for me. And I try to, I try to train myself to like, they're complimenting me. It's okay. I mean, you don't have to say it's not true or whatever. I don't know if the words ruminate, it starts like spinning yeah. out of control. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. starts spinning and then it, I start going downhill and just start having intense suicidal thoughts, wanting life to end. And like, I, I feel like with suicide attempt survivors, I feel like uh, the stories that I have heard are, they actually don't want to die. They just want the pain to end. That's all they want. They just want the pain to end. They want to be alive, but they, uh, right. the pain is too much. Just pain is too great. There's always outliers, but I think the default for human beings is not wanting to be dead. But yes, yeah, the pain becomes too great. Uh, do you remember the first time you started thinking about suicide? Fifth grade. I mean, when I started seeing a therapist, hanging myself or popping a bunch of my prescription meds. I, I don't have really have those anymore. I mean, I still have my bad days, but not not as ten, intense as the as back then. Did you did you try or did you come very close? I became very very close twice. Can you talk? What was the first one? Do you recall? Right before my second uh, hospitalization, um, I don't know if everybody was sleeping or everybody was out that night, but I remember just pacing around my room. Mm-hmm. thinking, am I going to kill myself tonight? Is this it? Am I going to leave a letter? What am I going to do? What if my parents find me? What are they going to think? I mean, they're not going to think good, but thinking about other people, what are they going to say? What's going to happen to them? I don't want anybody else to hurt themselves or feel sad because of me. And I guess I just tied the rope, had, had it in my hands, looking at it, just bawling and crying. And I, I don't know, I just, some something, I just put it down. And I guess my second attempt was... I think after the hospital, my, after my ECT, my third, my, sorry, my second, after my second hospitalization, my grandfather has a condo 
up at uh, Beaver Island on Lake Michigan, kind of secluded on the south part of the island where nobody really goes. It's very peaceful up there. One day I just started, decided to go in the woods by myself. I had, I had no suicidal ideation then. And then I guess once I started acquainting myself with where my surroundings are, I started having these deep, intense suicidal thoughts. Mm-hmm. And like, it, it was really scary. And I, I, I mean, I didn't know what to do. And I just had these thoughts of you should kill yourself. You're not good enough, stuff like that. And I mm-hmm. guess I just, after like five minutes of having those thoughts, I just ran out of the woods and went to my parents and then nothing really came up. I don't even think they know that. Okay. What? And the first one was in your room. Is that where you are right now in your room? I'm in my, uh, in my brother's room. Just so I'm clear on the timeline. So you've got, I mean, was it in your email that you wrote something about your freshman year playing football? My uh, freshman year football, I got bullied a lot on the team. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't really like the culture. It's kind of a bunch of guys being rude to each other. And so they were saying things, horrible things about, not even about me, about my sister that, mm-hmm. I mean, my sister, when I was in freshman, my sister was a senior. They were saying things like, oh, oh your sister's a hoe. Your sister's a slut. I'm gonna go fuck her. Wow. And, shit, and stuff like that. Like, I don't have any bad will towards uh, those guys anymore. I mean, I just feel pity for them because they have to put other people down, bring themselves up. Mm -hmm. It's it's sad, honestly, at this point. I mean, I've grown so much. So that was your freshman year. When was the first time you had to or or you went into the hospital? The first time was junior year. I went to uh, a not so good place in Michigan. I mean, I've never been to jail or anything, but it felt like that. You had time to take a shower. You had a time you had all line up and take a shower they gave you food when they gave you food you couldn't really ask for food unfucking believable yeah it's it's yeah it felt like a prison i mean i've never been to one i'm not claiming it yeah but yeah i got it maybe they should actually call themselves a not so good place yeah That's the name of <laughs> the place. I, um, then i guess my second hospital stay was that same year it was at university of michigan hospital they have a great program there that's where I got my ECT but I remember just hearing a bunch of all these stories about all these other psych wards sometimes they keep you there to get money out of you like oh yeah yeah like it's like for profit yeah and it's really crazy and then sometimes they told me some stories of like when people started acting up and wouldn't listen or started causing problems they just put they give you drugs and put you down to sleep don't try to talk to you. They just put you to sleep, mm. which is really, yeah. They just put needle in your butt and put you down to sleep. So let me go back here. So third grade is your earliest memories of stuff yeah. starting to not be great. Fifth grade, you start to think about suicide in some form. Yeah. Uh, ninth grade, you, you play football and there's, and there's a bunch of dicks. My word, yeah. not yours. <laughs> 11th grade, you go to the hospital for the first time, and that was not very good, like no. a jail. Was that something you went to voluntarily or involuntarily? Uh, I mean, it was voluntary. My my parents thought it would be a good idea because I was very suicidal. And I didn't disagree with them. I thought I needed to be in there. But I, I mean, nobody wants to go to the psych ward. Nobody wants to do that. But it's something you just have to do sometimes. And help me help me remember... What point did you first almost try with the rope in your room? How old were you then? I was in 11th grade. I was a junior. Around the same time. Yeah, I think that was after my second, my first hospital stay. Got it. The first Spec- attempt. And then after it uh, was when I went up north. And that was my, sec- my, I guess, second. Yeah. Beaver Island. Yeah, Beaver Island. And then around the same time, junior year, hospital two, locally, better program. Yeah. And you had ECT done several times. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a whole like process you have to do. They start leaning you off ECT every, every time they get better and better. If you start feeling better and better, it took about a year for me for just ECT at least once a month or three times a week, just leaning me um, slower and slower off until I, until they thought it was I didn't need it anymore. I mean, ECT is not the end all be all. Like, uh, you also need to be in therapy, take your meds and everything else. But it mm-hmm. it helps a lot. And it's not like a cure. It's not a cure. It, it, no, it's not a cure. It helped you. 
Yeah, it helped me a lot. Yeah. So ECT therapy and meds have been something that have at a minimum kept you alive and maybe even more than that. Yes. Mm. And also friends and family people, I have a really good support system, right? which I'm grateful for. And they keep me going. Did you say a little earlier about if I hadn't had this, I don't remember what the this was, you would not be alive. Was that ECT? or your Yeah, ECT. Team? Why did you say that? Why do you feel that way? It honestly changed my life. The people working in the ECT program, the nurses there mm-hmm. were absolutely amazing. They were kind. They joked around with you. I mean, for me, I've got a really dark sense of humor. Uh, so they joked around with me. They talked to me. I remember I had really long hair down to my shoulders. Sometimes I woke up in the recovery room or in my bed with just braids in my hair because they decided they wanted to braid my hair, which is, I thought, because they always complimented my hair and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And they always asked, oh, can I braid it? Yeah, they were amazing people. I, I absolutely loved them. And I wish I could see them and thank them again. Yeah. I'm sure they'd want to hear that, you know? Yeah. Those acts of kindness go so, so, such a long way. Yeah. Such a long way, especially when you're in a place like that. So you're 21 now. So if my math is correct, that I was about 18, 17. I know I was 17 because uh, that was still in the child ward. Second hospital stay and then junior year. So senior year, you finish. Yeah, what what just, happened since then? Because now, you know, it's been a few years. I worked at my parents' restaurant for four or five years. Just mm-hmm. working. And then since COVID happened, we had to shut it down. We had to close it, which is sad. But I mean, honestly, I think it's for, for the better now. What kind of restaurant? It was all farm to table, uh, locally sourced foods and that kind of stuff. Nice. Yeah. So how's COVID been or the lockdown? When the first lockdown started, I thought it was honestly great. <laughs> Sometimes I can be very uh, to myself and be antisocial. But once the weeks and months went on. I started getting more antsy and I started feeling more and more depressed and mm-hmm. just wanting to be locked in my room and shut off from the world. It's been fucking hard, man. Yeah, it's been very hard. What do you do? You may not have an answer to this, but what, what do you do to feel either good or okay or at least not shitty, if anything? Usually uh, whenever I play video games with my friends or go outside and play lacrosse right now. I'm, I'm coaching my old high school team, which has mm. been very help helpful to me getting out, seeing the guys play lacrosse. I, uh, I love lacrosse. It mm. helped me a lot with going through my stuff, just being with the guys, being with a group of people. Yeah. Do, but, and those are guys like your age, you know, I leave the high school or obviously younger. Yeah. Does this stuff ever come up? Cause I know for, almost any group of human beings, but especially maybe younger guys, athletes, you're not talking about this shit. Oh, no. I mean, my second hospital stay was in the season. It was between the season. We we didn't really talk about it. I mean, once I got, I missed the season because I was in the hospital. I got a few nice messages and uh, I don't know, we shouldn't talk about it, which, which is okay. I mean, I'm not mad or vengeful or anything, but mm-hmm. we, I don't know, we shouldn't talk about it. I mean, I wish we kind of did. I mean, I mean, when, and also when I got back from the hospital, going back to school, I wasn't going back full time. I remember just seeing people, some people were just kind of looking at me, like, mm. like I feel like they knew like where I was and mm. not, not really judging or just, I don't know, just, I could feel eyes on me. How many people know that you, what you've gone through? Uh, a lot of people. I mean, I, I'm not really, I'm not really not one to share about my story or my depression. I mean, at one point I'm just like, I'm done with this. Fuck this. I'm I'm gonna if you don't want to hear it, don't listen. Then this is this yeah. is what I have to go through every day. This is what I have to do to keep myself going. Right. So you've so you've shared that with some people. Yeah, I've shared it with all my friends know, all my family know. No. A lot of people in my circle know. How many people know about the almost attempt with the rope the first time? My parents, I think they know. I think some of my friend my closest friends know. And that's about it. And Beaver Creek or Beaver Island? I don't know why I'm calling it Creek. Beaver Island. <laughs> I think I only told my aunt that my aunt also struggles with depression. A lot of people in my family, especially on my mom's side, struggle with depression. I think mm. it was kind of passed down to me. Yeah, we struggle with depression. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. One day I just felt really sad and she was asking what's wrong. And I, I, I told her she was very helpful and I, and I love her to death. Mm. Man, it does help in some ways when someone's gone through some of the same stuff. Yeah. I mean, 
it's just tough to have conversations with people who have not gone through anything. Yeah. Everyone go through stuff, obviously, but you know. Yeah. So if you've heard the podcast, you know, I tend to ask certain questions. Yeah. And one of them is, do you think you'll attempt again? Or in your case, come clo- dangerously close. Let's, let, let's say it that way. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, maybe. Hopefully it won't happen. But I mean, I can't really see the future. But yeah. <laughs> but sure. things are going good right now. I'm starting to get new work. I'm getting a job at a nonprofit or trying to volunteer at a nonprofit. Mm-hmm with for kids that for community centers and kids that have, live in low ca- income in, um, areas. And uh, I'm also trying to start a nonprofit with a friend um, that uh, gives money to people or gives money to men that can't afford therapy. This is what we're trying to focus on right now. You're starting a nonprofit. That's a huge project, man. That's yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. A bunch of my, one of my family members is she has uh, started lots of nonprofits. So she's going to, Help right. Them. Why did you choose that particular type of nonprofit to help men who don't have the money for therapy? Because I know, uh, I mean, the stigma around depression and men, it's like, you're not supposed to talk about it. Like, yeah. you're supposed to shut up and keep on going and fight through it without talking about it, which is stupid. <laughs> right. I just want to reduce the stigma even by a little bit as much as I can. For you, man, that's amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing that we even need nonprofits like that but we yeah. do when i talk to people in the hospital they're like i don't know how i'm going to pay for this i'm like you shouldn't be worrying about that right now you should be worrying about your mental health not the bills you're going to pay after and stuff like that which is really sad oh for sure man it's 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 beyond so bizarre mm-hmm. oh man so it sounds like you got some family friends and support system that's one of the things that helps yeah which is cool do they know that you're talking to me I told my mom and uh, my my close family, my I think my brother and sister now, and my and my mom and dad know. So they're supportive. Yeah, they're very supportive. I know my mom. She my mom has depression, and she's helped me a lot. She's told me stories of uh, her and her depression, and my she told me stories of her mom has depression too, and whole, told me stories about sometimes I'm having to take take care of her mom because she was too sad or depressed to be a mom or whatever Mm -hmm. and she also told me stories when i first started getting ect she told her mom that i'm getting ect and she was very scared because she had ect before they put the put you to sleep Mm. and she was very scared and she i mean she didn't she didn't really know what was going on in that field and she was very scared and i mean i understandably i mean (laughs) everybody in my family is very supportive and i'm very grateful for that yeah Amazing. Yeah. So now when you get ACT, at least when you got it, you don't, you're not awake for it. No, not, not anymore. They, they put you to sleep. They give you the right amount of, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know all the things that they do, but I know they give you the right voltage. They, they put you to sleep. They knock you out. The first thing they do when you get in the room, they knock you out. Mm-hmm. It, the procedure is about 15 minutes tops. And then they, you go to the recovery room and then you, you get sent home. And then you, uh, I usually wake up in my bed. And I just have a massive headache um, before and sometimes feel nauseous, which I'm, I'm okay with for the outcome. I mean, the outcome is way better than or I can stand a few headaches, big headaches, but feeling good is yeah. Yeah, man. Jeez. Yeah. I think there's some misconceptions around that. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I see on Reddit, some people say, don't do ECT. It's horrible. They, I'm like, you know what they're doing now with the, how far they advanced now? It's, it's crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Another question I often ask about myths, things that, that you've gone through that you think people out there should know about that aren't true. Uh, any, any come to mind about all this stuff? I mean, depression is real. Mm. I see podcasts like other podcasts of those like alpha male people, I'm not trying to throw any shame or anything. This one podcast that I saw or a clip of, these guys, I don't want to say any podcast names or put them under the rug or anything, but they brought on somebody who has depression. They were asking him, do you have a job? Do you have, do you have clothes? Do you have water? Do you have plumbing or whatever? And he all said yes to that. And he's like, and they're like, why do you feel sad then? It, it angered me so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mean, like all the, all these celebrities have depression. Anthony Bourdain, Robin Williams, they had everything in the world. Anthony Bourdain was flying around the world, eating amazing food. It's real. It's okay. Yeah. And if it gets left untreated, 
Yeah. Even if you get it treated, it can it's yeah, could it can be major be. problems. We can't candy coat it, right? There's no guarantees here. Yeah, my actually my past three months have been not the best for me. I mean, uh, October 11th, uh, my uh, aunt ended her life. The same aunt you just talked about? Uh, no, a, a different aunt. She ended her life. She had a lot of uh, she had depression and all these types of problems. She had she was uh, raped. And had the she had a, the rapist was stalking her after, it, yeah. And then that happened, and then it really hit me hard because she was always there for me. For some reason, she always texted me when I was at my lowest, mm. and I and I regret it now. But she always texted me when I was at my low, lowest, and she always asked me if I was okay, and I always mm. said fine. And I regret it terribly right now. <laughs> that was just in October, a couple months ago. Yeah, and then after that, right before Thanksgiving, my great grandmother died my great grandfather my great grandmother are both dead and they were big influences on my life Mm -hmm. after that one of my friends got shot on thanksgiving day so i've been trying to just deal with all that did he die yeah he he died he got shot yeah he it's some crazy story yeah he got he got killed wow that's a lot to to deal with man yeah in the span of three months (laughs) death after death after death yeah yeah, but I've been just trying to keep my head up and yeah, it's life. You got to move on. And I suppose, yeah. If there's somebody out there like you, not exactly like you, of course, nobody's got your hair. Yeah. We're not going to compete with your hair. It's got good hair coming from a guy who has no hair. So it's a low bar. <laughs> I always, I've, I, I ask this question sometimes and I know it's a really tricky one because you have no idea who's listening. I always think there's sort of three groups, so to speak, there's, and they overlap. You know, people who have tried, people who are thinking about it, and then maybe people who are helping people out who are in that space. So without really knowing much about them beyond that, I mean, anything you would want them to know? For the people that are helping somebody, just shut up and listen. That's why I like your podcast so much. You're just quiet and listen. You wait until their full story is said and you start talking, which is, I think is amazing. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you just need to listen and you can have a little bit input and tell a little bit of your struggles here and there, but it's at that point, it's about them and helping them and being for them. Yeah. I appreciate what you said about, about me listening. Thank you. It's funny because sometimes I'm thinking to myself, Sean, shut up, man. You just keep talking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I do that all the time. I, I interject and in, mm-hmm. in conversations and I try to keep myself down but then i feel like sometimes am i talking enough am i talking too much and i start having these problems with uh, my depression yeah 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 (laughs) i think there's some value in at least having that the mechanism of awareness as opposed to just completely not having a clue of what the yeah what you're doing whatever the first thought comes to your mind what else is there to the uh wilson story as we talk right here in late december 2021 I guess I'm just dealing with things and trying to get better and wanting to help other people. It's, I mean, that's if um, there's a great quote, um, Bo Burnham, give others what you cannot give yourself. Mm. And I really resonate with that quote. See, I know that you're not much, you're more of a lacrosse guy. Um, do you want to go on the record and say who will win the Michigan Georgia game? I mean, I hope Michigan wins. I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Honestly, I'm, it's 50-50 for me at this point. If they do, man, Ann Arbor is going to go wild. Oh, my God. Thanks again for talking, man. Do you have anything else uh, that you uh, come to mind? Anything else you want to add? All, all I really want to say is just be kind to people. You don't know what they're going through. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay. Just talk to people. Talk to people that you know that will help mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And if if you don't think you have anybody uh, just, I don't know, <laughs> just talk to somebody, mm. try to look for help. It's, it's okay. You, it will be good at the end. I always think, I like to think that there's light at the end of the tunnel, even though you don't see it, there's, it will always be light. Cause at one point in my life, I didn't see the light and now I it's, it's dim. It's dim mm. right now, but mm-hmm. I see it. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate your honesty and and sharing. And uh, I'm sure there will be people who hear it and benefit from it. That's what it's all about, man. For for what it's worth, Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. I'm Ann Wilson. Have a good one, man. You too. Take care. Bye.
As always, thanks so much for listening and all of your support. And special thanks to Wilson up in Michigan. Thanks, Wilson. If you are a suicide attempt survivor and you'd like to talk, please reach out. Hello at SuicideNoted.com or on Facebook or Twitter at Suicide Noted. And again, I know I ask this a lot. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, please take a moment right now, scroll down or whatever you have to do to rate and review this podcast. It really does help people find it. Thanks very much for that. That is all for episode number 89, the first of 2022. Stay strong. Do the best you can. I'll talk to you soon.